Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today I am so, so excited, you can't believe it, uh, for another preview of RIS, RTR Imperium Serectum. This time for version 0.6, they've been very hard at work reskinning all the Hellenistic factions, all the Greek factions with these units. And today we are showcasing Sparta. So thank you to the mod team once again for this glorious preview. And oh my god, these units look so unbelievably good as a leaf falls from the sky. I'm not sure where that leaf has come from, in fact, because there are no trees around this region. But there is a leaf blowing in the wind and honestly when i loaded this up i got goosebumps guys this is unbelievable obviously i played sparta as a campaign so we spent a lot of time looking at the unskinned units and looking at these new skinned units is absolutely glorious now a little change in the format we're going to go through the missile troops first We've got our reformed troops over here, unreformed troops over here. I'm going to go through a little bit of the history directly from the mod team themselves when we get to the reform units. But firstly, let us start with these units. And the stats pretty much are subject to change, but are pretty much done for these units now, guys. So I can talk about the effectiveness of each unit, and you can kind of use it as a roster guide to start with. So without further ado, guys, let's get into the unit, starting with the pre-reform missile unit. And we have the Helot Javelin Men over here. Now, I don't really like Javelin Men. Uh, that is something that I have been very vocal about as a unit to use in the game. But they are very powerful, especially in the hands of the AI. Now, we've got 12 defense, 6 morale, 6 melee attack, and a missile attack of 9 with 7 Javis there. The missile range, of course, is 60 meters, which is actually quite uh, quite a long way when you consider. That's quite a long way for the enemy to cover off unless they're cavalry coming into your units. Uh, but they are a decent javelin unit, the standard javelin unit. And once again, they just look fantastic. Look at these guys. Oh my god, he is ready to fight, isn't he? Ready to throw his javis anyway. He probably doesn't want to get into melee. But those javis are getting thrown with the force of Thor by this guy. <laughs> I love the little details once again, guys. Look at the different capes. The different sort of hide hats. The cow hide hats. The cow leather hats. Looking very cool indeed. With the different designs of the robes there as well. Now... If I was going to take a missile unit with my Spartan army, which I will do, I would take four missile units if I had a full stack of a Spartan army. The decision would be between the Helot Slingers and the Helot Archers. And if we look in, once again, looking absolutely stunning. Now, these guys, they have their little bum bags on the side, ready to go to the festival. Um, nobody knows what can, what's contained inside the bum bag, but they hope they don't get searched as they go through those festival gates. But jokes aside, guys, they look absolutely beautiful once again. I love the different designs on the bum bags. And this is really what makes such a big difference with this mod compared to a lot of other mods. Just the different variation. These little details really make all the difference. Like, look at that clasp there with a different style of bum bag. And uh, we've got a different style over here. Different style. You can see even the bow. This guy's got a knot in his bum bag. I'm going to keep calling them bum bags, okay, guys? I'll say pouch. Okay, a different knot in the pouch. It's just those little details that really bring this mod uh, to the fore. But let's talk about the slingers then. Seven defense. Yep. Woeful amount of defense. Three morale. A woeful amount of morale. Four melee attack, a woeful amount of melee attack, but a missile attack of four with 32 uh, stones to throw out of their bum bag. Missile range of 140. I think that, that is the lowest charge I may have ever seen in this game. One charge for these boys, so you do not want to get them in melee whatsoever. These guys will just rout at the sound of... Of the enemy horses they won't even <laughs> the enemy horses won't even be able to get close because they'll already have left the battlefield but yeah 
a decent missile unit nonetheless, because that four missile attack isn't too bad with ammo of 32. As soon as you get a bit of experience on these guys, then they are going to be doing some decent damage. Now that 32 ammo, they do have 140 missile range as well. And as we move onto the healer archers, as we can see another different design once again looking glorious with their quivers along their side rather than the bum bag of course very nice indeed and we've still got the same hide designs of the um on the backs of these guys looking fantastic now i love the fact that they just look so they look so unelite. they look so from the dregs really and that is where they came from so the helot archers the full morale, so a little bit better morale than the Slingers. Better defense of 10. A melee attack of 7, which isn't too bad. And a missile attack of 6 with 25 uh, arrows and 130 missile range. So that 2 extra missile attack really, in my mind, makes it so that you want to take these archers every single time over the Slingers. If we look at those different stats... On top of that, you do get a bit of e extra everything else. The only thing you're lacking is ammo and missile range. Now, the only times those are going to come into real play are during sieges. So, I, uh, yeah, honestly, the Slingers, it's very unlikely most battles that you're ever going to get close to using all of your archers and Slingers ammo. So, I would say... That you want that higher damage output over a shorter period of time. And I would go with the archers. But again, a standard archer unit looking very cool indeed. Honestly, like I said, when I loaded in and looked at these units, I had goosebumps. It was so, so cool to see all the reskinned units. Because I did play with them so much um, during that Sparta campaign. Now let's look at our missile reform unit. The unit that comes after the reforms. We have the Uzonoi. And these guys, again, looking very cool indeed. And you can see getting a lot more elite with these guys. They even have capes, most of them. Uh, very, very nice capes indeed. Some cool little helmets over here as well. Looking very decent indeed. I love the look on these boys. Looking fantastic. Big shields ready to fire their jabbies. So they have a bit of protection against um, against firing from the enemy, from the enemy's missiles. But let's have a look at their stats. 23 defense is actually pretty decent for a missile unit. Very decent indeed. 14 morale is fantastic for a missile unit. Melee attack of 10 isn't great, but it's not too bad. But a missile attack of 11 with 7 ammunition. I know it says 6, but that's because of the one extra officer over here who doesn't fire any javis uh, but it's seven missiles for these boys with a missile attack of 11 looking very good so a fantastic unit really really good honestly i as i say i don't really like javelin units in rome but these guys these guys have got a buff they are really really strong now especially for a javelin unit and they won't completely crumble in melee, which is the main thing that is a worry with a Java unit. But honestly, I would still take the archers. <laughs> I would still take the archers. But that is just me, of course, guys. If you guys like using Java units, then of course, that is something that you want to take. And when you can get these Uzono, replace your Helot Javelin men with them over time. Now, let's move on to the pre-reform infantry. And we're going to start with the Cryptia. We use these a lot at the early game of Sparta when we started playing. And these guys are pretty much your militia. Although they come with a big shield and a nice looking helmet. Look at that one. That is fantastic detail on there. Very cool indeed. If I uh, just get off the unit, select a different unit, you can see just the amount of detail that has gone into these. Like looking at the shoes, the tassels, all that sort of thing fantastic the little designs on the helms as well looking absolutely glorious not to mention the shields some of the coolest looking shields in any mod i've ever seen honestly looking fantastic right then no capes so we know they're not elite and they are certainly not an elite unit as we've talked about before but they do have a little bit of a buff i would say 14 morale not too bad not too bad i'm sure that used to be lower 
30 defense is also not too bad as well. 12 melee attack isn't great, especially for a Spearman unit. But a missile attack of 14 with their two javis to throw before charging the enemy is not bad at all. And these guys are going to be solid now. Solid in the line. Solid against your Greek opponents. And solid uh, on the flanks. Oh god, I love these ones. With the uh, huge plumes coming out of the top, looking absolutely glorious. Very nice to see indeed. And of course, throughout the whole army, we have a bit of a red colour scheme. Of course, that would make perfect sense, wouldn't it? Uh, being a red colour scheme as Sparta. Very cool. Indeed, but these guys seem now that they will be able to hold the line a little bit better as you can see only one armor from that Helmet, but seven shield. So they're gonna do okay against missiles 22 defense skill is actually pretty decent and the rest of their stats are good for such a low tier unit So I'm not gonna say these guys are gonna break and run away instantly They're actually gonna do quite well now, but moving on to the next unit We're gonna talk about our perioikoi Hoplites, your actual kind of um, Hoplite unit, and it is very cool indeed. Actually, one less morale than the Crypt here at 13, but a couple more melee attack, one more melee attack of 13, but a lot more defense. These guys are definitely a lot more defensive minded, and just look how cool they look. Look at that, looking absolutely glorious. Very nice indeed. Stunning, stunning units here. And look at that. Look at that as we look down the line. Stunning, fantastically stunning. But I, I love it. But the Perioikoi Hoplites, as we said, uh, one more morale. Um, uh, sorry, one less morale, but one more melee attack. But at 37, seven more defense. And a lot of that comes in the armor. Six more in the armor and one more in the shield. So these guys are going to do better against missiles. And they're going to do exactly the same in melee defensively but probably have a little bit more of an attack. So a really decent, solid mid-tier unit and something you want to get your hands on probably early on to try and bolster the ranks more than the Crypt tier. If you can avoid the Crypt tier at all, then that would be great, but I don't think you're going to be able to. And as I say, they're a little bit better now. They've got a little bit of a buffing, I would say, unless I am completely wrong and they were just the same before, but I'm not exactly sure. I think they are buffed from what it looks like, but just look at these boys. Ready, mean, ready to go. Your standard Hoplite unit. Now let's look at the Skiritai, your sword and board unit. Looking very cool indeed. Very nice indeed. We've got a lot of these boys over here. Looking very cool. Very little armor. As you can tell looking at them, I love that purple on that robe there. Looking very nice. And uh, it looks like one of the slingers with their bum bag has been painted on this shield uh, after they have left the festival. <laughs> uh, but yes, let's uh, let's carry on. Um, the Spartan Skiritite, your sword and board unit, fantastic morale of 17. 33 defense, of which one is armor. Seven shield, however, so they're still going to stand up to most missiles. Maybe not Javis, but a melee attack of 13 as well. So the same as the Hoplites. These guys are going to be your flanking units early game. That's what you're going to use to try and flank the enemy early game and try and put the ground and pound down on the flanks of the enemies. Looking fantastic. Look at these boys. Looking very nice indeed. Um... Yeah, 33 defense is actually really decent. 17 morale is fantastic. And the 13 melee attack is okay. So these guys are not going to stand up late game, I will say. But early game, they're definitely going to be good for your flanking units. And a 13 charge is completely respectable. That is a decent charge for a melee uh, infantry unit. And of course, they are in um, uh, light infantry, so they have good stamina as well. Not quite fast moving. But they have good stamina. Now, uh, yes. Let's take a look at the big boys. The big boys of the Spartan early game army. It is unlikely that you will be able to recruit these guys early on, I'm going to say. Uh, unless they've done a lot of changes to the campaign map. But yes, these guys. You start off with a unit of them. Look how cool these guys look. They look 
fantastic. They look superb. Look at that. I'm in fact going to take a screenshot, hoping that that can be our thumbnail there. Because just look how awesome they look. They are glorious, glorious units. Absolutely glorious looking units. When I say a screenshot, I mean about five. But anyway, they look so, so darn good. So darn good. I love all the guys with the plumage on the helms as well. And they all look so mean and ready to fight. Again, the tiny, littlest details in these uh, on these designs of the Linothorax. Is that, is that right? The Linothorax? The, the, uh, is that a Linothorax? Uh, I'm not sure. Someone correct me in the comments because undoubtedly I will be wrong. But the um, we've got the uh, leather brace coming across for their scabbard. Look at these tiny little details. The dots, the tassels, everything is so detailed when it comes to these units. They've of course got capes and they're all red because they are ready to delve into the blood of the enemy. Now, these guys are kind of your elite early game troops. 46 defense. Monstrous defense. Seven of which is armor. 31 defense skill, which is huge. And eight shield. So these guys are even going to be fantastic against armor piercing units. Because only seven of their defense is armor. 15 defense against missiles as well. So they are just good against pretty much everything 20 morale absolutely massive and a melee attack of 15 which is also massive 16 charge as well so you can use them to charge into the enemy and i think these guys they're going to stand up late game very easily very very good unit if you can get your hands on these guys get them nice and early but let's talk a little bit about a, the history of these guys a little note from the mod team about why we've got these homoyoi and then we've got our phalanx units over there as you can see them as our post reform unit so let's talk about that for one second so when we're talking about the homoyoi guys we're talking about the elite full citizens of sparta but by the time of king ages the fourth in about 244 bc or Cleomenes III, whose reign ended in 222 BC. So in that time period, they had very little of these full citizens left. And they were kind of at a point of crisis. Uh, crisis, should I say. There are a few different sources, but they probably only had around a thousand. Yes, <laughs> that's only a thousand by the time of King Aegis, which is crazy when you think about it. You ain't going to be putting up a big army when you've only got a thousand full citizens. So him and Cleomenes tried to enfranchise the Perioikoi and even some of the Helots to join the army and become a more professional and more standardized army. And then they tried to train them to fight in the standard Macedonian uh, phalanx, which is why we have the phalanx units as post-reform in this nation, guys. Of course, in the end, um, they had to overcome the resistance of the conservative oligarchy. Uh, but basically, um, Aegis tried to do that politically, and he ended up getting murdered, which is the standard response to trying to make big changes politically back in the ancient Hellenistic times. But Cleomenes, of course, he was more ruthless, and he just killed and expelled anyone who didn't like the reforms. So that is why we have our lovely uh, phalanx units post-reform, like we talked about. A beautiful, fantastic historical note there from Mausolos. So thank you very much again to him for that. Uh, and it just gives you guys a bit more context as to why we have our phalanx units after the reforms. But let's have a look at our final infantry unit for the pre-reform. And that, of course, is our Spartan general. And once again, the glorious, glorious look of these guys. I love their little tiny harp clasps up here looking very cool indeed and of course they look fantastically elite don't they looking very elite indeed these guys they don't know how to stand on a rock so they are in fact looking off 
into the distance over there where the enemy is over here. But yes, glorious, fantastic looking unit once again. And of course, they are very strong. 47 defense, so only one more than your homoyoi over here. And in fact, they are pretty much just the homoyoi, but slightly uh, uh, half the size of the unit. But with 20 morale and 15 melee attack, all the same things apply as what the homoyoi did. They've just got slightly more defense, and that is one extra armor that they have. Oh, look at that helm. I don't think I've seen that one before. With the feathers. Nice. I love that. I love that. So your Spartan general early game is this uh, spearman unit. So it's not a cavalry unit. So you've got to be wary of that very early on as well. Because you're not going to have much cavalry. So let's talk about the cavalry that we have access to us. Now we have one unit. And that is it. Pre and post reform. Not including generals, bodyguards. And it is the Spartan cavalry. And as we know from the Spartan game, it is not good. <laughs> It is not good as a cavalry unit. It is really good for chasing down routing enemies because it's fast moving and they've got very good stamina. But it is very light cavalry, so you are not going to be able to chop and slice your way through Zistaphoroi, Thessalonian Lancers. Any of those guys around your region that have heavy cavalry will mosh your cavalry. So what you need to rely on is your better superior spearmen to do the damage to the enemy cavalry and use these guys just for quick darting charges and flanking maneuvers. Do not get them into extended melee for they will die. And they do look glorious, but you can see how unelite they look with their uh, just standard robes on rather than any armor whatsoever. In fact, they only have three armor, which is not great. Total defense of 19, not great either. 13 morale is, in fact, pretty decent. A melee attack of 9 is not good at all. So that's why you don't want them in extended melee fighting. With an alt attack of 11, which is okay. So that's when they get their swords out. But that's only going to happen when you leave them in extended melee. And as I've said, you don't want to leave them in extended melee. The charge of 27 is pretty good. Pretty good. So that's what you're going to have to use with these guys early on. Now, when you expand a little bit, and get to Larissa. There is available the Thessalonican Lancers that you want to recruit as mercenaries rather than your Spartan cavalry. They are going to do a huge amount more damage than these boys. But for now, it's all you can use and it's all you have access to. So you're going to have to use them because having no cavalry in an army is almost as stupid as having no infantry. So, yeah, you're going to have to use these guys. Stupid for a... Uh, I should qualify that. Stupid for a Hellenistic type army. Of course, there are full cavalry armies if you're talking the Eastern factions, etc. But yeah. No, these guys, not great, but you're going to have to use them until you get to Larissa. So do enjoy trying to use these guys. The reason why uh, Sparta has so little cavalry is that they in real life had so few. Uh, when I did my interview with Ahal the... Uh, um, the lead mod for RTR Imperium Serectum. Do check that out, by the way. Um, he talked about at one time they had a whole 300 cavalrymen in their whole army. And that is obscenely low. So that is why they get access to so little cavalry. Now let's look at our reform units, our reform infantry. And at first we have our Perioikoi Phalangites. Phalangites, your sort of lower tier of Phalangite. But they are very good as well. 34 defense. So not quite as much as some of the other mid-tier phalangite units. Uh, but 15 morale. 17 melee attack is fantastic as well. 8 alt attack. Not that you're going to want to use that at any point. So a decent mid-tier phalangite unit with very long spears as well. 7 armor. Quite decent. Uh, so they're not going to fall to missiles uh, quickly at all. And again... Just look how glorious these boys look. Looking fantastic. The little designs, the snakes on the shoulders. Lots of different designs. It's just the uh, the variability and the detail that has gone into these units. You can tell that they are a complete labor of love 
they are glorious. This, in fact, might be my favorite Spartan shield. The two snakes fighting. Looking very cool indeed. Very nice. But as I say, a solid mid-tier unit. So as soon as you can get these, you're going to want to start phasing out your sort of crypt tier and standard hoplites uh, and replacing your lines with phalangites. Uh, but use these guys in your armies as flanking units if you can because you don't want to just disband them all when you get to that point. But let's talk about our elite phalangites over here. We have our Neodomodeus <laughs> phalangites. Yes, they're very pronounced perfectly as usual, with 16 morale, which is fantastic. 18 melee attack, which is also brilliant, with a 36 total defense, which is about equal to some of the other uh, sort of more elite, uh, higher mid-tier phalan uh, phalangite units. 23 defense skill, 7 armor, 6 shield. So again, not going to lose much to missiles. Uh, and an alt attack of 9. Not that you're going to want to use that alt attack like we've talked about. Just a slightly better version of the Perioikoi Phalangite. So looking very, very awesome indeed. Once again, looking cool as hell. And like the main difference you can sort of tell between these guys is the different sort of helms. These guys have a more uniform feel to their helms. These guys sort of using a few different types of helms there as well. And we can see the variation in the different linothorax um, on the back as well. With some of them not even having linothorax. But looking very cool once again. And again, a decent unit. You're going to want to use these guys when you can and start replacing your perioikoi uh, when you get to that point. So let's move on to our final unit. And finally, when you get your reforms, you get a cavalry general. But I believe it only spawns with your direct family members, if I remember correctly. I believe your faction leader and your faction heir have this, and no one else does. So you do want to get your faction leader and faction heir into fighting when you get to this point, because you want to use your cavalry bodyguard, because it is, in fact, the only, uh, the only good cavalry unit you can have uh, a lot better than your Spartan Cavalry. And although their numbers are a lot less, <laughs> they are a lot better. Uh, trust me. 36 defense. Huge amount of defense for a Cavalry unit. 17 armor. Wow. That is huge. Defense skill of 19 as well, which is fantastic. And a 46 charge, guys. 46. Huge charge. 18 morale. 12 melee attack and 14 alt attack. These guys can stand up in melee. They can stand on the charge. Um, they can do everything. They are very, very good. And, of course, look how awesome they do look. Looking so cool indeed. Of course, they don't have a shield, but they have these huge lances that are ready to go. Powerful charge, very well armored, good stamina, and, of course, excellent morale. So when you get these guys, use them. Uh, charge them into the enemy. Use them as much as you can to charge the enemy and break their lines from behind. The old hammer and anvil I'm sure you're all familiar with. But they do look glorious. And they look glorious from the back as well with those capes. Now guys, without further ado, that concludes looking at the Spartan units. Let's press play. And we are teasing the next unit we are going to be doing. Which is Athens. Sparta's mortal enemy, of course. So we are going to be... Uh, we are going to be doing those guys next. And uh, let's bring all these guys forward, ready to go. The problem with the uh, Athens right now, we are on, playing on hard difficulty. Problem with fighting them right now is they have a lot of cavalry. And as we've seen so far, the Spartan army does not have a lot of cavalry. <laughs> we should have the, uh, the uh, benefit of the infantry, though. We have a lot more infantry, and our infantry should be quite a bit better. So we'll get on to this battle. Of course, if you want to skip this, guys, um, you can do. No problem whatsoever. Chapters are down at the bottom. But please do like and subscribe for these lovely previews going forward. That would be fantastic. Let's, uh, let's try and press a little bit with the uh, infantry. I think, uh, I think that's where we need to press our own advantage. The uh, Greek General's Bodyguard is going straight into my Homoyoi. That's something I kind of want to see. Because my Homoyoi are very good. Very, very good indeed. 
They should be fantastic against cavalry. Look at that. They've just shredded that general's bodyguard. Oh, I've missed the, the phalanx over here. That was terrible. Guys, just get there. Okay, we're routing his cavalry quite significantly. Where's my general bodyguard? Let's get you over there. You're going to be able to do a huge amount, but... Got our Homoyoya as our sort of infantry destroying... Oh, that's Prodromoy as well. We can... Uh, we can take Prodromoy. That is our that is our task in life to take out the Prodromoy. Wait, does he have two units? Prodromoy, no. <coughs> get our Homoyoy back into the action. Gonna get okay, our Cryptia have broken against the Theroperoi of the enemy. Get the Homoyoy in there. So we're gonna get our general in there. I'd like you to fire at the Tarantine cavalry, please. Oh, yeah, the Zistaphoroi just came in and s destroyed my cavalry there. That is not something that we want to see. We might, in fact, lose this. We, yeah, we might, in fact, lose this. What is that? The Ephibati, Ephibati? Shaking the uh, Epilectoi. See, Javi's reigning in on the uh, Epibate. Epi. Wait. The Epibatai. Ah, uh, we're, getting, we're getting shredded in a few places here. We've got to break this block of Hoplites and uh, <coughs> Zistaphora. Oh, the Zistaphora have charged in the back. That is really, really going to do some damage. Get in there, Cryptia. That is your job. I think we lose this, you know. Athens just have too much. We are on hard, of course, as usual. Um, yeah, Athens just have too much. Look at that. We do have, still have two Fallen Giant units, which cannot be understated. These use only, again, are not too bad in melee, so we're going to get them in there if we can. Uh, I was going to try and uh, save my Homoyoi, but it looks like we're not going to be able to. Yep, that's as, that's as gone, I think. That's as done. Have I lost one of these so far? I don't know. I think I've lost one, actually. So, yeah. Obviously, these uh, unit... Like, uh, these army compositions are not how you would have a normal army as well. Uh, but, yeah, that's them going. At least our phalangites are standing strong right now. <clears throat> that is the only thing that is a, a, a positive to this right now. And our general's bodyguard is also standing kind of strong, but it's not going to be long before they uh, decide to go, I would say. <clears throat> yeah, that's us done. We'll uh, speed it up. All we're waiting for is our phalangites to finally run, as well as this general bodyguard as he does. Ah, general is dead. The phalangites have done some serious damage, though, before they rout. There we are. The fire arrows were what did it in the end. Ah, glorious battle anyway. Brutal bloody battle. So, fantastic. Oh, hello. Let's go fight them, guys. They're probably going to rout straight away. Done. How we move them rout? Ah, oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we are. I mean, they absolutely destroyed me. Very, very upsetting. Healer Archer 75. But yeah, this has been the Spartan roster, guys. So I hope you enjoyed. Please do like and subscribe, all that good stuff. It really does help the channel out. And I will see you all again on the next video.